friends. Uncle Marv here with another episode of the IT Business Podcast, your podcast for IT business support, whether you are a solo tech, computer repair shop, managed service provider, or you're working in the corporate office trying to make things happen as a system administrator. This show is for you, where we try to help you run your business and support your network better, smarter, and faster. This is the weekly live show where we come on here and stream out to all the social media places, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the Facebook, and give an opportunity for you to participate in the show. There is an opportunity for you to post in the chat. And tonight, because we are going solo, and basically what that means is I don't have a guest. There was a schedule change, and I didn't have time to find another guest to fill the spot. And I just didn't want to spend the time going through a litany of topics to see, hey, what should we talk about? So I figured tonight I am going to go back into the email. I will answer questions that I had there. I'll give you the opportunity to ask a question, or if you'd like to hop into the show, if you're watching the screen there, you can ask a question in the chat on any of the platforms, or you can use the web link there, itbusinesspodcast.com slash join, and you'll end up in my green room. Uh, I'll screen you, see who you are, and bring you onto the show if you have comments. Of course, that means that somebody has to be watching, and uh, I will see how that goes as we get started. Uh, it's just right at 8 o'clock at the top of the hour, so let's get on to the show. When we do show low souls like this, I dispense with all of the the videos and all of that stuff, so I'm going to go right into the sponsors as a live read. The IT Business Podcast is brought to you by NetAlly, your number one ally in network testing solutions. NetAlly's innovative product Products empower network engineers and technicians to quickly and easily troubleshoot both wired and wireless networks. Say goodbye to frustrating downtime and hello to fast and reliable network performance. Try NetAlly today and experience the peace of mind that comes with a reliable network. And are you in need of computer repair in Venice, Florida and the Southwest Florida area? Look no further than Computers Done Right. Their team of experienced professionals specialize in computer repair, virus removal, data recovery, and much, much more. Whether it's a desktop or a laptop, they've got you covered. Visit today and experience the top-notch service that many satisfied customers have come to expect. Computers Done Right, your trusted IT partner. And are you looking for reliable remote access for your business, then look forward to utilizing Instant House Call. And if you head over to instanthousecall.com today, you can sign up for a free 15-day trial. The software is built for IT pros. It is robust software that is easy to use. And if you sign up, you'll not have to use a credit card you can get instant brand awareness and support your business with instant house call. And a shout out to Corey Fruitman over there. Corey gave me a trial that I need to uh, go back and check in with uh, because I had not had an opportunity to use it as a one-off service uh, versus my RMM. All of my endpoints are set up within my package there, but uh, we do need a solution for one-off support for you know, those new customers that call or maybe somebody's, you know, needs help with their home system for remote access. So uh, I do use uh, products for one-off support. So instant house call is uh, what I was going to try. And I got to reach back out to, to Corey Fruitman for that. All right, let's get right into the show. And uh, hello, Mr. Eric Anthony. Uh, Eric, uh, saw a little bit of your show earlier tonight with Ken Patterson, Pax 8. Good topic there. Uh, you guys are a little, a little too philosophical for me up there talking about uh, 
MSPs, good and bad, vendors, good and bad, big and small, ecosystem, all those cool words there. So, folks, uh, Eric Anthony, uh, we'll be chatting. I think it's uh, here in a few weeks. Uh, I don't know. We're going to try something new, so be on the lookout for that. I'm not going to spill the beans yet because we actually haven't tested it uh, to see if it works. But Eric Anthony and I will be getting together soon and doing uh, a show together. So, Eric, thanks for hanging out. So let me explain. I had put in the show description that I didn't have a guest, didn't have a topic, but I needed to rant. And I've decided to tone that back a little because um, sometimes I can you know, get a little loose with the lips there. And I didn't want to call anybody out uh, too bad. But uh, one of the things that I will mention, let me go back through an email uh, conversation that I had with a client that started yesterday and ended today. And this is from a client that has a junior on site. Now, those of you that have listened to me over the years, you know, I love to talk about juniors. I've got a couple of them at some of my clients. And basically, for those that are new to the show, what a junior is, is some of the clients, they are big enough that, well, let's rephrase that. No, that's fine. I can say that. They're big enough that they probably need somebody in their office full time, but they don't want to pay for the full time network administrator. And when they hire, you know, somebody like myself or another managed service provider, well, they don't want to pay those rates full time. So they kind of do a little hybrid where they've got somebody in the office that can take care of the little needs, you know, things like my keyboard stopped working, my mouse stopped working, my monitor is on the blink. Um, hey, I need to, you know, move this real quick. And they want to have somebody that's there and available because let's let's face it, a lot of times we are not always at the ready for them, especially if you're more than 15 minutes away from them or you have an SLA of, you know, four hours. You try to do as much as you can remotely, but if it's going to require an on-site visit, Sometimes you may not get there, you know, in four hours, let alone that day, depending on what the nature is. So uh, this customer is a fairly large law firm. So they have a junior on site and he actually takes care of a lot of other stuff. He takes care of their website and newsletter. Uh, when they have new staff, you know, they'll take care of putting pictures up on the website and, you know, all those little things that are stuff that, one, I don't want to do, and two, I'm not going to hire somebody to do. So that's what this particular junior does. But this particular junior, when he started, and I tried to find out you know, a little bit about his background, his history, his experience, the only comment that I got back was, well, I am Cisco certified. And I said, okay, well, we'll see how that goes. So he's been there, I don't know, he's been there a year or more. And the email that I get yesterday says, good morning. And he, the, actually I should have said the title of the email was a new user's name and the computer that it was. And so he writes, good morning. This CPU is unable to display both monitors. After multiple attempts of unplugging power cords, display cords, the CPU continues to show blank screen for an additional monitor. I do get a number when I click identify monitors one and two. After that second monitor remains blank, user is working at another workstation that is operational in the meantime. So before I was able to respond, there is a firm administrator there who also would like to be a junior and do as much of my job as possible. So literally within two minutes of the email, this firm administrator writes, try switching out a monitor to see if that works. If so, we need to throw away the monitor currently at the workstation. If new monitor is not working, we can have Marvin address. So then the reply back from Junior was, sorry, I did not mention that. The user did switch out monitors as well. No luck. So I remoted in just to see what was happening and of course, both monitors worked for me. 
and I opened up programs. I switched screens back. Everything was fine. And the way that, you know, this isn't something where it's like a remote desktop into the station and you don't really need two physical monitors to see two screens. This is the built-in RMM tool for Enable, which is the product that I use. So it is really pretty good at determining and showing back what two monitors actually would show. And if there wasn't a second monitor, I would not have two monitor as an option in my RMM. So I saw that. So I wrote back, uh, can you please have user go back to that station and check it out? I have both monitors up and running remotely and want to see if they are showing online in the office. So later that afternoon, well, first they had written back and saying that the user is in a training and we'll get back to them later. So then later in the afternoon, I'm not seeing anything in the dashboard and I have verbal communication. The screen is still blank. So without doing much work, because I was busy and I didn't think anything more of it, I commissioned a tech because this office was actually two hours away. It's in Port St. Lucie, which is just about, well, it's not two hours. It's maybe an hour and a half north of me. And I just, I wasn't going to drive up there for a monitor issue. So I had a tech locally go out. And literally after five minutes of being there, call me back and say, okay, we're good. And when I asked what it was, <laughs> the tech said, oh, well, the screen was just black. It was working and it wasn't the same as the other screen. So I just changed the background and they're happy. So I wrote back to Junior and the administrator saying tech was just on site there was no real issue. User was seeing a black screen, and I put that in big capitalized letters, not a blank screen. Tech changed the background and everything works fine. The reply back from Junior was this. Thank you, Marvin, for the update. Can you please tell me what the tech did to fix the background? Now, I ask you, what would you write back in return? Because I still have not written back because my man is Cisco certified and I think he should be able to know how to change the background on a monitor. So that is, uh, was that. So, <laughs> uh, yes, my good friend in the chat, John, say what? Yeah, that's exactly um well, that's not exactly what I said, but I said some choice words, but uh, I am not writing back Junior on that. So here's a couple of email questions that I got that I want to go ahead and respond to. And again, uh, those of you that are watching live, I see we've got a couple here uh, streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Uh, if you've got questions while I'm here, this is an open mic show and unscripted. So if you have questions or comments, throw them in the chat. And if you'd like to jump on the show, head over to itbusinesspodcast.com slash join, and I'll get you in. Uh, let's see. Here is the question. Um, Israel writes in podcast 483, you mentioned that you were using a vulnerability scanner. Just wondering which one are you using? And I should say that, this was um, the show where we had Vonahai on. They were one of the finalists in the Pitch It contest from last year, a uh, contest that we'll be doing uh, several interviews coming up this summer. I believe they've narrowed down their competition to 27 vendors. Uh, these are new and emerging vendors in the marketplace, and so they're going to be pitching themselves uh, to MSPs and other channel uh, experts, I think. And then there's going to be a competition. They'll get down to the final three. It'll be at nationwide or what is that conference? IT nation in Orlando in November. So they'll have three finalists and then they'll do a final pitch kind of like shark tank. Uh, so Vana high was, uh, on that uh, show. Vana high is also the ones that I believe that got, uh, purchased or observed by Kaseya. Um, so I responded, so the vulnerability scanner that I was mentioning is actually one that comes as part of the 
Defendify package. For those of you that do not know, Defendify is a cybersecurity platform. Uh, they are kind of like an all-in-one platform. They give you options to do things like an external IP scan, which is what they call the vulnerability tester. Um, you can do an external. You can also do internal. Internal, obviously, is a lot more, and you need some sort of appliance or virtual machine on-prem to do that. I don't do their internal uh, testing. I believe it's something like $2.50 or $1. fifty per endpoint or something inside there. Uh, so the external IP vulnerability scan is what I was referring to there. Uh, going back to Defendify, they also will provide uh, scanning of the website, and they'll tell you if things like your SSL and your, certir- your certificates are good. They'll tell you if there's any uh, open patches, you know, the known exploits for things like WordPress and Apache and all of that. They do some other uh, testing along with that website test. They'll uh, test your email uh, IP addresses. They also will provide some employee awareness trainings. So if you want to do a phishing simulation, if you want to provide a classroom experience for cybersecurity, or if you want to have, I believe they're weekly Uh, Threat updates, kind of like a newsletter by email, they can go to your users or a designated user at your client. Uh, Of course, you can get those yourself and then just send them along the way. They have, um, I mentioned posters that I actually did that with a couple of the clients where we would just simply download the posters and have the clients, you know, put them up in their break room or wherever they hang their posters and stuff there. There's a bunch of other stuff that Defendify does, but they were a company I've met uh, basically two years ago. Um, Glenn and Shana, Shana, I call her Shana now, uh, but she's no longer there. So I I do have to reach out to them and uh, get an update on where they are. So that is the vulnerability scan that uh, I use Israel. Uh, Another email. Uh, question was staying with Datto backup kind of hard to find a replacement two months ago was the first time I had to do a local virtualization restore because a server got wet. The server was back up in three minutes. So I have mentioned that I have been moving some appliances away from Datto. And that's usually the smaller appliances. So I believe it was called the auto appliance there entry level uh, one terabyte machine. And I think uh, when I got in on those, it was something like you can get the machine for free. And then you had one year of backup retention in the cloud. And I believe the price was pretty reasonable at $79 or something to that effect. And something happened where the prices started going up with the storage and across the board, it just, let's just say that they, they got pricey and nothing wrong with it being pricey. It was, it is still a premium product. If you want a full best in breed, best, best in class, don't censor me, uh, product where you're going to get complete end to end backup that includes virtualization, includes testing. Uh, includes 24-7 support. Datto is still the Cadillac of them all. But for for clients that are a little price sensitive, because as an example, uh, one client, I have two of their 12 terabyte, uh, I forget which ones they are, the SC1200, I forget which pro model they are within, but uh, the the monthly cost for those appliances is over a thousand dollars each. And they've got two, they've got one for the East coast, one for the West coast. And, you know, not that it's a bad cost for what they, for what they get. Uh, They're coming up to a point where those appliances are starting to get full, starting to get a little slow and sluggish. So we're looking at the new ones for them and, you know, you're going to pay, you know, five to seven grand for 
an appliance. So that's a cost that is paid up front. And then the new cost, I believe my price was going to be something like $1,400. And then I've got to mark that up. So the client was looking at other solutions and they're like, uh, we can get, you know, backup for half that. And I said, yeah, you can, but you're going to get half the service. Um, I said, the only option we can do is look for another, you know, appliance that I can bring on site and throw in my backup services. And I said, it's still going to be pricey because to, to match what the data is, uh, it's going to be, t- it's going to be tough to do. And there are products out there that can do it. A lot of you uh, talk about Accent and Veeam and some other products uh, for the smaller clients, the ones that we uh, replaced the Altos with, we actually started doing Synology and using the built-in Synology uh, active backup and hyper backup, uh, which are free products inside of Synology. But of course the customer's going to pay for the appliance and they're going to pay for the labor to monitor and, maintain the backup. So there still is that. Uh, so for those clients, we started putting in Synologies. And the other reason that I went with Synology is because there's so many other things that you can do with a Synology box. For instance, you can, if you get the right appliance, so let's you know, not get crazy, the smaller Synologies aren't going to do what I'm going to be mentioning. So for the larger Scenarios where I'm going to be doing something like I may be doing a file server with backup and I'll be doing a virtual server. So if we're going to get rid of a physical HP server and we still want to run something like a QuickBooks, well, they still need an actual server. So uh, for uh, what is there, the X plus boxes and higher, which I started the 1621, uh, if you're going to go look up the Synology numbers where you can run a a virtual machine and do all the other services such as the file server. You can do the backups. I also will do, um, I just went blank. Da, 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 da. Oh, I'll throw a Domotes instance on there because Domotes you can run inside of the Synology. So between a virtual machine, Domotes, the backups, um, there's a lot of other things you can do. You can do, Snapshot backups inside the appliance so you've got stuff there on site. The hyper backup will uh, back up to the cloud, will back up to the Synology C2 storage product, which obviously they prefer, or you can do something like Wasabi. Uh, the pricing technically is about the same per terabyte at uh, $699, but the difference is you prepay for that storage in the C2. So if you're going to, you know, need a box with five terabytes of backup space, you pay for five terabytes, whether you use it or not. Whereas with Wasabi, you just pay for what you use. So you may estimate that you need five, but you only need four. So you pay for the four. And the there's a whole little thing about ingress, egress prices and stuff like that. So if you're going to use something like, um, you know, AWS uh, Glacier or something like that, which can be cheaper to store, but you're going to pay a lot to get that data down. But the Synologies will go to any sort of S3 cloud storage. Uh, I just choose um, C2 or Wasabi as the two uh, that I use with that. So that is my data backup uh, thing. Let's see here. Oh, I should give a shout out to Mr. Mike Smith. Uh, Mike had a show recently back on, I don't know, it was the end of April, where he was talking about uh, email issues, DNS, FPS, all that stuff. And he actually gave me a shout out for um, supporting him and the fact that, you know, sometimes you have to check DNS first because all things being equal, it probably is DNS. So thank you, Mike, for giving me that shout out. And I thought I had the notes here. Yep, here we go. Show number 867 on uh, April 27th, Mike's show, Mike Tech show there. So, hey, another good podcast to listen to if you are in need of 
some good technical knowledge, uh, some stories from the trenches, Mike Tech Show, along with our sister podcast, MSP Unplugged, Rick and Paco over there. They're also putting on TechCon Unplugged this September 7th through the 10th in New Jersey. I will be there. Uh, head over to TechCon Unplugged for all of that. I think the early bird pricing is gone. I think tickets are two ninety nine, but still a bargain. Still a bargain. Uh, I had a Facebook message from Mr. Barry. He said, you want to hear a good one? We had an awful client that did not want our updated security stack. They found another provider, and we sent all the takeover information to them. They gave us the go-ahead to remove our software. Apparently, on one of the computers, Bitdefender did not uninstall according to them. They had to remove it. They are trying to bill me for their tech to go out and uninstall it. This is like me getting a burger at BK and going to McDonald's and telling them to remake my sandwich. Face palm, LOL. Um, oh, and he actually put a copy of the info. I don't think I can read all of this. But needless to say, um, as I go through here, they are charging. Well, this ought to be fun. So to remove Bitdefender... And I guess I need to ask if it's just the one computer because they are charging one hour of labor at 135. They are charging a $50 out of service travel and sales tax with a total coming to $196.10 to uninstall a Bitdefender instance, which here's the thing. If you're the incoming MSP, you're putting your stuff on there. It should either automatically uninstall or don't you as the MSP, as part of your onboarding, go through all the computers and do an assessment of what's there and do your own rip out of software that you don't want to be used. I mean, are you really going to charge to uninstall stuff, especially if you're charging for an onboarding and your onboarding is say what a thousand bucks and then you're going to go try to charge an extra $196.10 to uninstall one software. Um, you know, I usually don't, I, I try to be respectful of other techs, but if you're an MSP doing that, you're a, that's trying not to curse. That's crappy. That's what that is. Crappy, crappy, crappy. You know what? We have a, <laughs> listen, we have a hard enough time with our customers as it is. We don't need people doing that. All right, here's an email that I got. This is from another client. This was this was today at 6.05 p.m. So I, to give a little background on this, so a customer emailed on, I don't know, Thursday, and they had hired four new people to start right away. And I had to scramble to figure out what I'm going to do to get all of these uh, set. I did have one computer on site that could be reused for a customer or an end user that was leaving, and then I needed to get three computers uh, over and installed. And this customer doesn't have space, let's say it that way. All of their offices are full. They have two offices where they have doubled up one office, two attorneys. This is key here. Two attorneys are sharing an office. And then they took the biggest office that was used by the managing partner, first name on the door. He gave up his space to have four desks put in that office. They also have a file room where they had their copiers, the, the big copiers that they would do, the printing of all their big jobs. They do their scanning. And they already had one uh, part-time gal that was stuck in the corner in that file room. And so I had to say, where are we going to put these three computers? Because all the cubicles were full, all the offices were full. So we quickly did some review of the floor plan. And the idea was, okay, we're going to take out file cabinets and put two more desks in the file room. We're going to do another double up of an office and make all of this work. So I had to get a cable guy over to their office 
and we actually put in eight jacks, four in the file room. Um, and the reason we had to do that was because they actually are a client where their phone system and their network are on two physically separate networks. We have Comcast Voice coming in on one circuit, and there's a switch specifically for the PoE phones. So those are running completely separate. I'm not doing VLANs or anything. These are literally physical cables for the phone circuit. And then we've got separate ones for the data jack. So we had to run uh, one for the phone and one for the data for each user. So four in the big space, in the big space. In another office where we're going to be doubling up again, we put in uh, four additional jacks in that space. And then I had talked to them before. They have a front area of their office where they've got a couch, which is nice and looks good, but they never, and when I say never, I mean they never have clients come to the office. So that is wasted space. So I told them, why don't you put some cables up there and you could do little library cubbies for people that need to come in just for the day or something like that. And the reason I mentioned that is about half of their office works remote. I don't, I don't want to say half the time, but they've got a few people that you know, like haven't come in in months. So one of those people, we actually moved their computer into the server room because they never come in. So my thought was, well, let's pull it back out of the server room in case they ever do want to come in and they could be at a cubicle if needed. And then if we have other people that need to come in, we can do that. So I convinced them to run four jacks up there. So we ran a couple of 12, you know, a total of 12 cables. So granted, I told you this came in on a Thursday. Got my cable guy to do all of that on Friday. I went on Saturday and installed three new computers and uh, got all of their people, their four new users, provisioned, ready to go got the workstation set up, all good and dandy. Well, come to find out, two of the people decided not to start this past Monday, which don't matter to me. I'm still going to bill you for coming in on Saturday. So I get the email today, 6.05 p.m. Marvin, is it okay if I switch? And the names have been changed to protect the innocent and the guilty. Marvin, is it okay if I switch Ingrid and Michelle? I decided that I want Michelle to sit in the file room. I just need to switch over their hard drives, right? Let me know and I will do it tomorrow. I think that I will then want to have Ingrid's computer reconfigured for someone else. Ingrid would just sit with Margot in the file room without a computer of her own until Margot leaves. Is it possible to put two sign-ins on Margot's computer so when Margot is not there, Ingrid can work on it? If not, that's okay. I'm also hiring another new girl, Mindy. That is, if she accepts. I'm waiting for her to call me back. I will want to put her in a cubicle and will want Ingrid's computer reconfigured for her. Also, the new girl that would be sitting in with Kelly and Nicole at the desk we reserve for Michael will be starting around June 3rd. Her name is Sandy I will give you her info later on. Thanks. Carol A. Daly, Florida Registered Paralegal slash Office Administrator. No comments. I just wanted to read that email. (laughs) Anyway, so, all right. Well, um, those are all the things I ticked off that I could, uh, well, I checked off. I was ticked off earlier, but those are the things that I checked off that I could talk about without cursing. Um, (laughs) OMG, you have the best clients. Yes, I do. And mind you, oh, what I should tell you, I don't know if I, I don't know if I said this. So this client that I speak of is a law firm client, which most of mine are that I got to go back and find out when I, first met them. But when I first met them, I was told that one, they don't need me and they would never spend a ton of money on IT. Now I'm thinking this goes back to 2008, 
eight, nine, somewhere in there. I'll have to go back and look. Uh, this is a client that now are using me. They have three offices, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Fort Pierce, and Lakeland. They've got about uh, 40 users, and we just basically doubled our billing for them in the last month. They are on a full MSP plan. Uh, they're paying. They're not paying full MSP for on-site. They're paying basically my uh, remote package. So they pay for unlimited remote technically. And if we go on site, we bill them. So they're paying basically $70 per endpoint and user. Um, so I forgot, I forget where that comes from three grand or something like that. Uh, 2,700 is what they're paying uh, a month. But this is the client that actually paid for us. When I say us, me and my wife, Kim, they called up and said, Hey, we'd like for you to go on a cruise for us all paid for. So I don't know, I forget when it was March, beginning of March. So the wife and I got to go on a cruise complimentary of this particular client. So I don't always complain when this client does stuff because they, I like them. So I didn't really like going on the cruise. Kim did, but yeah, those are, those are my clients. They are great. Uh, let's see. Before I go, so, oh, I want to say thank you last week to Zena Hassel for coming in and doing a live show here. Uh, you guys uh, showed her some love. I appreciate that. Next week, I'm going to have on uh, a company that I had back on in 2020, back on the Podnuts Pro Show, Backup Assist. Um, their actual name, I think it's Cortex IT or something to that effect. Uh, this was a product that I was looking at as an alternative to Datto way back when. Um, they are fairly inexpensive. They have a ER product that is very similar to a lot of stuff in the in the channel. It's a ten dollar uh, per server license. Um, you bring your own hardware, much like a lot of the others, and then you can pick your own backup location, but they will do uh, bare metal backup, uh, image backup with the ability to instantly virtualize if you need it. So we're going to have them back on. We'll talk about some of the updates uh, that they have gone through. Oh, I have a note on here, Ruckus. I'm going to save that story. I have a Ruckus versus Meraki story. Uh, I need to do one follow-up on that before I tell you the outcome. Uh, but I will say that right now, Ruckus is winning. But we shall see. Um, let's see. I mentioned TechCon. Oh, Pax8 Beyond. Uh, Eric uh, had on Ken Patterson with Pax8. So Pax8 Beyond is happening June 11th through the 13th in Denver, Colorado. I will be there. And we will be doing some live podcasting from there. Going to be hanging out with my good buddy and pal, the godfather of the channel, Rob Ray, and some others there. So if you're going to be in the Denver area, hook me up or look me up and hook me up if you can. Um, need to find some good places to hang out in Denver. Mike Wise and Lara are in Denver. So we're going to meet up, I believe. Uh, let's see here. Oh, June 21st to 22nd, I will be in Tampa, more specifically Clearwater, uh, for the ASCII Edge Conference that has been renamed. It used to be the ASCII Success Summits. Uh, now it's called ASCII Edge. Don't know why they changed it, and I haven't bothered to ask. Uh, so that is June 21st, 22nd. Uh, that'll be near my good friend Mike Smith. Uh, a lot of other friends are in that area. Uh, Ryan Buccianico. Uh, let's see. Steve Cherubino is over there. Uh, one of my contract techs is there. Justine, somebody that we met at TechCon last year, is there. There's a lot of people there. We may have a, a little Uncle Marv meetup if they all don't go to ASCII. Kristen Pittman is there, the Solutions gal, um, the one that does a whole bunch of um, Microsoft stuff. She's helping out G Giles. Lady Di will not be there. I don't know. Some, for some reason, she's putting family 
above uh, conferences. We'll have to have a chat about that. Uh, so that is it, folks. Thank you very much for hanging out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end off the show here. Yep, a short one tonight. Just me ranting, reading emails. Uh, if you have comments or suggestions that you would like to forward to me, send them over to Marvin at itbusinesspodcast.com. Uh, while you're at it, head over to itbusinesspodcast.com and show me some love. Um uh, Click on the shop, support the show. Click on the, uh, <laughs> hello, Giles. Yeah, we'll miss you. You know, that that's going to put you behind on your uh, conference streak. I believe uh, Mr. Tim is going to be outpacing you two conferences to one this year, I believe. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, so head over to itbusinesspodcast.com and uh, hit the sponsors page. So, Show some love to our sponsors. I mentioned Net Ally at the top of the show, Computers Done Right, and Instant House Call. Also, you will see on there, Synchro uh, has become a big contributor uh, to the show recently, although they left me off the best podcast to listen to in the channel. Thank you, Synchro. Uh, Ovic, uh, I'm working on some stuff with Ovic. So as many of you know, I'm a big Domotes guy, but Ovic is also... Uh, a tool that you can use to discover and map your network, monitor performance, all that stuff there. So check out uh, Avic there under the sponsor page. And of course, if you like to do what I'm doing here with the streaming and you want to use something StreamYard, uh, I have a little affiliate link there. But really what I want you guys to do is uh, click on the shop Amazon and go on there, save that link as your Amazon Go to page. So if you're purchasing stuff, uh, that's the easiest way to support the show. Uh, everything that you buy there, no, no extra cost for you, no bump in the price or anything, but a little bit of one, two something commission comes back. Uh, if you save that link, um, there's an Uncle Marv's Amazon store. So all the stuff that I have used, books that I have written, software, of course, the net ally gear. And, oh, I have a little My Podcast gear down there. So if you want to be a podcaster, uh, click on that stuff and see what I use and uh, support the show. So that's going to do it. So Eric, John, Giles, thanks for hanging out in the chat. I know there's probably some other people there that don't like to be called out, but thank you very much for participating. Um, That's it. We'll see you next week. And until then, holler.